one way to Chi Wuqian homeward bound after failing the examinations. If sages ruled, no failed scholars would live in shadow. Ability and intelligence could come and go at the palace. Men out of office would return, like Cheyenne of East Mountain, and no longer starve to death gathering ferns for food. You came and took the test, and yet the Emperor's gate is still out of reach. None can claim it is due to lack of talent. When you travelled here through Yang Huai, it was cold food day. Now, in both capitals, people mend their spring clothes. Seeing you off with a drink, your long road ahead, my heart will travel with you on your journey. Now you will float away in your boat with Cassia oars, and before long you will open your rustic gate. As I watch you sail away through distant trees, I will be left alone here in this twilight city, although our talents have been overlooked. We're friends in a world where friends are hard to find. So, this is another poem by Wang Wei, like the one we talked about yesterday. This is a poem uh, about parting, and it's a poem about um, a scholar failing the examinations. So it's a consolation poem in which uh, Wang Wei wants to, you know, offer some degree of, uh, of consolation, of kind words, to a friend who has failed in the examinations and is leaving for his home province. And it's also a poem perhaps tangently about the, the virtuous people who are retired and the virtues of the retired life, although there's not much about that really. Now, this is similar, as I said, to Wang Wei's A Farewell, but uh, it's much, much, much more developed. It's a bigger poem, many, many more lines, so it has much more space to talk about what it wants to talk and to illustrate it with, with examples and with images. So uh, Wang Wei was quite successful in office. He had his ups and downs, but you know he was generally quite successful. He ended up being like vice chancellor in, in one of the main central bureaus of the state. And uh, the poet to whom he addresses this poem, Chi Wu Qian, was ultimately successful in the Jinxi examinations. He became a civil servant, although he didn't occupy any important positions that I know of. So this poem has two or three sections, I would say. So the first section is composed by the first four lines, and uh, this acts as a kind of an introduction to the topic of the sage not being recognized, which is very appropriate for a poem that is talking about or is consoling a person for failing in the examinations, saying, you know, you're a wise guy, you're a sage, even if you haven't passed the exams. If sage rulers ruled, no failed scholars would live in shadow. So the poem starts by saying that uh, in a golden age, we're not living in a golden age in, in Wang Wei's uh, poem, so in a golden age, in a really mm, good age, virtue is always recognized. So this is the Confucian, this is a Confucian ideal. It's the idea that in the past there were sage rulers, especially in remote antiquity, the emperors Yao and Shun, and uh, society was then a perfect meritocracy, which is the Confucian ideal. The most virtuous people should rule, and in, in, there should be a strict hierarchy based on merit uh, that goes from the top, from the sage emperor, to the, the basest of persons. So in those golden ages, whenever a person was virtuous, he was employed in office. And it says here, yeah, so in that golden age, you would have been employed yeah, because anybody who was able and intelligent served the emperor. And two historical examples are quoted. One of them is Xian of East Mountain. Now, he Xian was a historical figure of great importance in the Eastern Jin dynasty. That's approximately the, the 200s of our era. The late, sorry, 300s. Yeah, the 300s, the fourth century. Now, Xian mm, was a minister. He lived in retirement, but he was uh, called back to office, and he was a wonderful prime minister. In fact, he saved southern China from an invasion 
by uh, by the northern barbarians. So him being back in office from retirement is an example of a virtuous man who in a good age was able to serve the state even though he had retired. The second example, those who starved to death gathering ferns for food, refers to two brothers, Po Ji and Xu Qi, who were meant to have lived at the end of the Shang dynasty and at the beginning of the Zhou. They were very virtuous people who went to the west to, to see the virtuous King Wen, but when his son King Wu decided to destroy the Shang dynasty, they, even though the Shang were corrupt and, uh, and uh, the Zhou were, were virtuous, they, as loyal people, decided to, that they would not accept a, a change of dynasty and they went to the woods where they lived on ferns until they starved to death. So, an example of virtuous people. Virtuous scholars, virtuous sages from the past. Now, the poem then continues talking about the specific situation of, of this case, uh, the fact that Shi Wu Qian tried to take the test and was unsuccessful. But very clearly, the, 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 the key line for me is, none can claim it is due to lack of talent. So you fail the examinations, but you're a talented fellow. You know, these things happen. And the quota for the, the people who passed the examinations was very small. There were many, 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 many candidates. So it's not... At least the poem implies it shouldn't be such a hard blow. Don't take it too badly. And uh, no, the poem continues saying, you know, you came uh, when it was uh, called Food Day, which is a celebration which I think takes place in close to the new year. I'm not sure. So still winter. And uh, now you're leaving when uh, the people are taking out to mend their spring clothes. So it's probably, you know, Two or three months have passed, unless, unless uh, it is meant to be a whole year that has passed, which could also be the case. Anyway, the next section of the poem, which we could say is almost the final one, is the one that, in which uh, the, the, the poet Wang Wei says goodbye to Chi Wu Qian. They part, they drink, and uh, Wang Wei imagines how the return journey is going to be. So he, he travels with Chi Wu Chan and his imagination down uh, the waters in his boat with cassia oars and to the rustic gate and the place where Chi Wu Chan is going back to, which is his home territory, which is in the southeast of Japan, I think in modern day uh, Jiangsu. I'm not completely sure yet. But well, in the, in the southeastern coast of Japan. And the poem finally concludes with a couplet, which is, you know, it synthesizes the gist of the poem. Although our talents have been overlooked, we're friends in a world where friends are hard to find. So this poem was created for one main reason, which is friendship. And it says, we have encountered each other, we enjoy each other's friendship, and that's more important than anything else, than success in the examinations, and worldly success and recognition, and so on and so forth. So, quite a nice poem. Uh, I wouldn't be able to say if I prefer this one to the previous one, because, you know, both are very similar, both are on the same topic. This is um, bigger. This feels more like a traditional Chinese poem, in that it starts to include, you know, references, quotations, like uh, the ones I've commented before, that make it a little bit more hermetic and that require a great knowledge of the tradition to, to savor, to enjoy the poem. But you could say that that enriches it and it gives it a greater depth than, than the first one. The first one is a bit more synthetic, but I don't know. Both are good poems. Yeah, I, I enjoyed this poem and I enjoyed uh, its images. So, quite nice, quite nice. <laughs>